What's going on guys, welcome to another video in the series best and worst body uh, part, alright? So I'll give you three best exercises and three worst for a body part. I did shoulders last time, today we're talking about back, alright? So, my, let's start with the best, my third best exercise for the back. It will be a single arm dumbbell row. All right, a single arm dumbbell row where you're kind of holding on a rack or a bench and you're rowing. I love this exercise. It's a great movement and it's a free weight exercise. I feel it so well in my lats. I feel that it's a very good exercise to give you a thickness. Everything you're rowing, it helps give you that thickness on your lats. And guys, it's important to do it properly. A lot of people, when they're rowing, they squeeze their shoulders back and down and then they row. You see, there's not a lot of lats in movement. You gotta let your scapula kind of be free. Reach for that stretch and pull with your elbow. And look, just by doing that little difference, you would see my lat is engaging a lot better. Anyways, so you don't wanna be squeezing back and down, but you wanna let your shoulders be free and roll with your elbows. A lot of people make the mistake of holding back and down and then all they're working is their arms and their rear delts. All right, so that's why they don't get great lat development. So dumbbell arms row. Top two of my back exercise that I really love, it would be the barbell row. And I would put the barbell row before the dumbbell row and a better exercise because you're not being supported. It's completely in the air and that's where you're engaging a lot more. Your core, your lower back, your hamstring, your body is working as a whole and you're able to load more, which will impact greatly your nervous system and your body, your hormones. So the barbell rows, we see Dorian Yates, Ronnie Coleman going crazy on it. It's a great exercise. It's really the focus of my workout. When I'm starting to do my back day, it's always the focus, at least 30 minutes on this barbell row where I'll pyramid the weight up and down. My top one back exercise, can you guess what it is? I'll give you three seconds to guess what's my best lat back day exercise. And it's the pull-ups. I love pull-ups and I would do at least, at least a hundred pull-up each back workout, right? I was thinking because I wanted to say three, four hundred, but no, let's be real. I would do at least a hundred. I would uh, superset every big lift, for example, with a pull-up or I would finish with pull-ups, five sets to failure. I always go super, uh, no, pronated grip, a little bit wider than my shoulders. And guys, pull-up are a great movement. People think that with body weight, they can not build muscle mass, but the pull-up is so much better than a lat pull down. A pull up would not only help you engage your lats, but your core. And also the way how you're pulling yourself up works your back so differently. All right, even Arnold said it, there was no better exercise to open up that curtains than doing the pull ups. And I don't see people doing it anymore these days. All right, so th those are my top three back exercises. Uh, let's go for the worst ones. All right, the, the, the three worst. Top three would be rack pulls. Yeah, you might hate me for it, but I see people doing rack pulls and I don't see them engaging any back, any lats. The way they're doing it, it's mostly hitting their traps and the glutes, all right, the lower back. So maybe the rack pull, there are argument to be made that it could be a good exercise, but the way people are doing it, loading up the bar, they're not getting a lot of lat engagement. Even when they're doing deadlifts, it's very rare to see someone doing a deadlift properly and really engaging those lats, all right? So that would be number one. Number two, uh, top two worst. Oh, I forgot one of the best. Oh, it's all right, I'll give it as a bonus later. So top two worst, it would be uh, a supinated grip, supinated grip like this, lat pull down. Why I don't like supinated grip? First of all, you're engaging a lot more your biceps. So when you're doing supinated grip, you're working a lot your biceps more than your lats. Second thing, the risk of injury on your tendon is super high, which I don't recommend. Anything rowing with a supinated grip, I do not recommend. All right, you really gotta be careful, especially when you're rowing, you don't wanna put that uh, big stretch on your biceps tendon like this because a lot of people pull their biceps that way. All right, so be very, very careful with that. My number one worst, this one I was waiting for it, is the exercise where people bring a bench, they put it at a 45 degree angle, they lay just in front of the cable and they start pulling like this, all right? 
the science nerd based bodybuilder with that bench and trying to get that perfect degree aligned with the cable aligned with the stars and aligned with the moon guys this is completely bs all right yes it might give you a little bit of lat stimulation but people nowadays are using this exercise as if it was the uh, be all and all for back all right that's not your bread and butter that's not the steak that's not what's going to give you the back development you want to focus on your compound movements your free weights your barbell rows your pull-ups your dumbbell rows sitting on a cable and having this perfect I don't know what they do, the good stretch, just to get a stretch. When you're overstretching and you're overdoing and the science-based lifter, that's something they're not getting is they want to get their sets to failure. I mean, you're a science-based, you want to get your sets to failure, but it's important what exercise you're doing it on. And the compound lifts, the free weights are super important. They're crucial because they impact not only the muscles, but your central nervous system. I keep saying it, it impacts your central nervous system, increases your testosterone, your growth hormone, and that's how you grow with the free weight, works your stabilizers muscles. So isolation, very isolating and focusing on isolating and getting the right angle for the isolation will not benefit you as much, especially if you're an intermediate or advanced. As a beginner, whatever you do, you'll grow. But as an advanced, you want to tell me that you'll grow from a cable pulling? Not really. Even if you get it to fail, you trust me, it's not the same. It's not the same than a free weight. All the stabilizers, muscles, the way the, mo the, the, the motion of the dumbbell that can move in many ways and now your body stabilizing it the tension on your lats is so much different than with the machines i have a book arnold's encyclopedia you would be lucky if you would find a cable row in one of his back workouts it was pull-ups and barbell rows that's pretty much it a lot of pull-ups a lot of rows dumbbell rows you're lucky if you find one machine and each workout all right that's what you they will put at the end of the workouts remember machines were created to bring bodybuilding to the masses all right because the old grandfather couldn't do a squat so they invented a leg extension for him to make things easier and now people are going to the machines to make things easier stay with the free weight, stay with the compound movements you'll get a lot more results that's it for this video hopefully you like it hopefully it will help you develop a great back like that all right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. See you soon.